guys, it's your girl London and today I am bringing you just a get ready with me video and maybe some life updates and some chit chatting, just something that you can put on while you're getting ready or while you're cleaning or when you're laying down to go to sleep and you just want to have a video that you can listen to or you can watch the whole thing through. So if you want to get ready with me and see what new products I'm using and how everything turns out, then stick around because we're getting right into it. Okay guys, so let's go ahead and let's get into some of the new products. So these are either new to the market or they're actually new to me. So I wanted to kind of find a way to utilize a lot of the new stuff that I've been getting and to be able to chit chat with you guys for a while um, because I am getting ready for work. Yay for that. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and moisturize my skin because I've not done any moisturizer or anything like that. And what I'm going to go in with first is the Glow Recipe Plum Plump Hyaluronic Serum. It's Deep Hydration and Glow. So I got this in a BoxyCharm. Um, I believe it was this month's BoxyCharm. So I'm going to go ahead and put this on. I've never used it. Oh, wow. I thought it was going to be like a pump, but it's not. You undo it. Oh, no. Wait, hold on, hold on. I feel like I did something wrong there. I think I was supposed to pull. Hold on. Okay, guys. Don't twist it off like you think you would, would need to. What you need to do is pull, and it is kind of tight. So pull it off. It has a little pump. I'm going to pump just a little bit out to my hands. It's just clear. Put some on my face. And go ahead and rub it around. And this is supposed to be um, clearly moisturizing. You can use this um, day and night, it said. It is spreading but because it's a serum it does tend to um, not spread quite as far as a moisturizer because for me at least it starts to dry fairly quickly so it looks like I'm putting on a lot but I'm actually only taking a minute pump um, to kind of put on my face so just want to make sure I have that on kind of the big part of the face kind of the Thing. It doesn't, um, God, this thing is so tight. It doesn't have a smell to it at all, which is nice. And the serum itself is not sticky. So I've tried a lot of serums where you put them on and they do actually feel very sticky. This doesn't feel sticky even after it's drying down and I am wiping my face and kind of feeling it. It feels... Um, almost like a moisturizer. Now if I do this, it feels tacky, almost like it's a primer. Um, but it doesn't feel sticky in the sense that when you're doing trying to rub, like it feels like it's going to like pill or it's tugging. Um, it feels very nice. I do think it gave a nice glow to the skin. So the next thing that I'm going to use is actual hydration. And that is going to be the Pharmacy Daily Greens Oil-Free Gel Moisturizer. And I think that I got this in a BoxyCharm last month. So... This is an oil-free, silicone-free daily moisturizer that delivers lightweight, elastic hydration without feeling greasy. You can use this also day and night. Take off this little thing here that it has in the top that it stops it with. Ooh, this smells almost like a limey. It has kind of like a limey scent. Um, so I'm going to take just some from the outer perimeter and kind of just put that in my hand and go in. So guys, what have you been up to? So many things oh, have been happening in the world. I promise you, like, it is only March. And while I can say that, in my personal opinion, 2021 is, I don't want to say better, but is, Okay, better. It's seeming to be a bit better than 2020 in many ways, but at the same time, I don't know if it feels like it's better in many ways simply because there was a lot of unknowns in 2020, and so it was constantly that state of anxiety and panic because things were unknown and they were rapidly changing. 
Um, so you could never really get your footing and that maybe 2021, it just feels like we have our footing. We kind of know how things go. Um, I don't necessarily think we are in a space where when things change that we, it's outside the realm of us being able to kind of absorb it and process it. So I think in that way, it's making 2021 feel quote unquote better than 2020. However, it, there's just been so many recent events that just really makes me question, like, is there a better? Is there like, I, I, I don't know. I just feel like this is a continuation year of like the cousin of 2020 where it's like, it's not 2020 and that's a plus, but at the same time, they have the same genes and that can really work against us in many ways. Um, so I don't know. I just, I don't really want to like get too deep into it because I think that they're triggering topics. YouTube doesn't like triggering topics. I understand that people don't necessarily like triggering topics, but, but what I will say is that I'm just, I'm just ready for things to get together. Um, using the extra firming clearance under eye treatment. Um, I'm just ready for things to get together and not for things to get back to normal because I don't necessarily know if we actually know what that means. I think normalcy becomes whatever you start to adapt to. And I think that we have adapted to a lot. So I don't know if we could actually go back to where we were before because we have now adapted to something new that has become quote unquote our new normal. Um, and at many levels that we have just accepted certain things about that. However, I would love to be able to get to a place where it's feeling like not every day has something that's happening. Like at this point, I just feel when I wake up every day has something. Um, and it's just like, gosh, are, are we going to take a break? Is, is anybody going to take a day off or this is just going to be like, this is it just every day. There's going to be like something popping. Like I, I'm ready to kind of take a break. I'm ready to take a step back. I'm ready to just breathe, um, and have a moment, but I don't necessarily know if that is going to happen anytime soon. Um, I am going to take the, hmm, let's see, I'm going to take the clearance instant smooth perfecting touch. I kind of use it as a primer just right here in my T zone or where I should have my pores, I should say just kind of looks like this. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much where I have been with that. Um, just trying to really make it through and knowing that it's only, you know, coming to the end of March and I just feel like so much has happened. Like, I feel like 2020, it felt like that year was like 24 months. Like 2020 feels like it literally was a double year that it, it was two years in one where I feel like 2021 is feeling like it's moving so fast. Like already, you know, we're almost in April. It just, it just feels like, gosh, we're almost back to the summer, which means we're almost back to the fall. It, it's just like, I feel like it's moving at a much faster pace or seeming to move at a much faster pace than 2020 did. I think that also too can be quasi scary in itself to know that time is perceivably moving so fast. Um, next I'm going to use the e.l.f. Mint Melt Cooling, Mint Melt Cooling Face Primer. Um, this is from their new mint collection. It just has like a little spray. You just go squeeze, squeeze, and it's like a gel formula. So for me, I have officially started my PhD program. Now I have talked, <laughs> some of you guys might be like, weren't you already in it? Okay, so about that. I have been applied to my PhD program for two years. And I know that sounds like a long time, um, but they held my space for two years for me. Um, and I just, there were a lot of factors. I didn't know if I wanted to take on the extra student debt um, because, you know, my master's degree, that was a lot of money. So, I mean, that was... I mean, probably, uh, depending upon where you go in the country, you know, that cost me a townhouse probably, um, I bought like a townhouse with that, um, or a really nice Range Rover with it. Um, you know, hundreds, 
hundreds of thousands to kind of get that degree. I should say a hundred thousand to get that degree. Um, so I didn't really know if I wanted to take on the extra financial debt and financial strain um, to get my PhD, but I also would go back and forth in what I wanted to get it in. Um, if you don't know, I am a therapist, so I do have, you know, my master's degree and my post master's um, or dual master's in counseling. Um, and so that's what I do on a day to day basis. I didn't know if I wanted to get my PhD in something totally different, like maybe public health. Um, I didn't know if I wanted to get it in something completely outside the realm of what it is I do and get it in business. Um, I didn't know if I wanted to do IO psychology. Um, it was just, it was a lot to think about. It was a lot to think about bang and buck, kind of like if I'm putting the time and money into this, what is going to be my, what am I going to get out of it? And I know sometimes, especially like in the medical or healthcare field, we like to think that, oh, but if you love it, just do it. Um, but that's not reality. The fact of the matter is, is you want to make sure like with any other field that the degree that you choose, while yes, you're happy and fulfilled in it, that you also can have a job that can give you more than just living the rest of your life on somebody's couch and eating ramen and air every day. So it, it was kind of a lot. Um, but I also wanted to be happy in whatever concentration that I went into. So ultimately I ended up settling on developmental psychology. So I'm in my PhD program to become a psychologist and my concentration will be in development. I did not want to go the clinical route. Um, a lot of people ask like, well, why aren't you going to do clinical psychology? Like that is the degree to get. Um, one, because one of my main goals is to do, um, research and the big main goal is for me to become um, a professor at the collegiate level. So for most of you, if you don't know that many um, community colleges will hire you as an adjunct professor and sometimes even a full-time professor, if in fact you have a master's degree um, in the discipline that you're going into or a master's degree and licensure in the discipline that you're, you're gonna be teaching. When you go to the four-year universities, although there's some that will also hire you with that, most of them want you to have a PhD in the discipline in which you're going to teach. So if you're going to teach psychology, they want you to have in psychology and or a field that is closely related to psychology, um, human services, uh, social work, counseling, things like that. They don't want you to necessarily have a PhD in art to teach um, psychology or counseling courses, things like that. So that is kind of my main goal, although I still want to be able to do um, what nurses would call bedside nursing. I still want to be able to see clients in the clinical practice, in the clinical setting. Um, I do want to kind of pivot and focus my attention mainly on being a professor. Um, I would love to be able to do some research or be on a research team of some sort um, and then also keep like a handful of clients that I I see. So that is why I did not go the clinical psychology route. Um, also, the fact of the matter is, is that a lot of what clinical psychologists do, I just really wasn't interested in. Um, the way insurance works is that most people don't see a clinical psychologist for therapy um, because of the red tape that happens with insurance. So you do see a therapist or a social worker. Um, so with that, it's kind of like the other things that clinical psychologists tend to do. I didn't feel that I needed to get a PhD in clinical psychology, psychology necessarily to be able to do them. Um, I can do assessments, um, although that is kind of their specified area. Um, it's not that I can't do them. It's that they are just more kind of, that is, that is their thing. And I don't want it to do um, assessments all day and things like that. Um, I want to be able to be more interactive, teach, see clients, um, and be involved kind of in that research aspect. So for me, clinical psychology just wasn't the best bang worth buck. So I went into developmental psychology um, because I am passionate about development, um, very interested in it, and want to hopefully be able to make an impact in the world and field of development. So that's kind of where I am. So I started my classes and it's a lot. I, I've been out of school for two years and I switched from APA 6 to APA 7. So that was a bit of like, okay. And it doesn't seem like that's a big deal, but there, there were a few things that I was like, oh my gosh, you gotta be kidding me. I wrote this whole thing 
and it's APA 7. So I'm kind of, you know, getting back on the ball with that. Um, so this is going to be a, a bit of an interesting experience, but I'm excited nonetheless. So I'm looking forward to kind of seeing what this is going to hold for me, how this is going to turn out, and kind of hopefully where things go for me in the future. So very excited about that. It is another three years of my life, but I did it the first time around. I can do it. I may have been in school now, oh, I don't know, eight years. So why not add another three on? Why not make it medical status and do a 10? Um, oh my gosh. I think that that, I don't know. That was a weird honk. Um, next I'm using the NARS Medium Dark One Biscuit for concealer. So yeah. So that's that about that. Um, I am not concerned with how I'm going to manage my time, but I just know that, you know, I've been out of school for two years, so I've had a little bit more leeway with my time. Um, and now I'm going to need to manage and monitor my time in a different way than I did before to ensure that I can get everything done that I need to get done. So again, I'm not necessarily concerned per se, but I am innately aware um, that the ship has to run appropriately, otherwise, um, looking for my sponge, otherwise things are not going to, to go the way that I would like them to go. <sighs> Other things that really have been happening, weather, I mean, today it is cloudy, it's supposed to be like 81 coming up, and then it was like 53, then we had a day where we had ice, ice rain come down, so... I'm, I'm unsure of what the weather actually is doing right now. Now, I'm not a person who necessarily cares for spring or summer, so I don't mind if they would ever come. I like fall and winter, but if we're going to have it, then I want to have it because I don't like having to switch my heating and air. Well, I haven't turned my air on, but my heating on and off. Um, I don't like going to bed cold and I'm waking up warm because I have 16 blankets and a heat blanket on me and the heater's on and it is, you know, already 53 degrees outside, which I know sounds cold. Um, but when it's been 30, that is definitely a warm up of temperature. I really like this. I, I don't tend to use this necessarily for my under eyes, but I actually do like it. I'm just going to add a little bit more of it. Um, but this is nice. It's like emollient, but not too emollient, but also not too thick. So very nice. What else? What else? Oh, have you guys been watching Snowfall? Snowfall is one of my favorite shows, and I'm so glad they said that I got picked up for season five. So I was happy because I know they had to take that whole hiatus when everything happened and they weren't able to film. And Snowfall is one of those shows that, although it's very good, to be quite honest with you, especially in the first season, you have to be dedicated to paying attention and be dedicated to wanting to know the story because if you don't, I feel like you very easily an audience can lose interest in it and be like, okay, this is, I'm not giving my, any more of my time to this. Um, and so I'm glad to hear that it got picked up for fifth season um, because I'm very excited uh, about that. Other things that have been happening is I've been watching The Real Housewives, excited because that is just, Real Housewives of New Jersey, love those ladies. I think they're absolutely hilarious. Love watching them. Um, been watching... What was it? Judas and the Messiah or Messiah and Judas. That was a fantastic, fantastic movie. Um, I watched America versus Billy Holiday. Oh my gosh. Fantastic movie. So freaking good. Um, I know some people had some issues with some of the accuracies or lack thereof of some of the scenes and things like that. But to me, it was just a great, great movie. I really love both of those. So you should totally watch them if you have it. Um, what else have I been really, oh, so on Amazon, one, The Equalizer with Queen Latifah, that show is really good. Like, she's doing a great job on that show. I really like it. Also, they have a show called Interrogation on there. Watch that show. It says that you can, like, the first episode and the last episode, you have to watch first and last. All the episodes in between, because they're from different vantage points. You, they said that you can watch them in any order. So you can go from episode one and then do episode six and then do episode three, then do episode seven, as long as you watch the last episode at the end. And you're supposed to kind of put the evidence together. And so it's like very interactive. Um, such a good show. It was, it, 
it was it was a good show. It really had me going there. Um, so if you're somebody who likes crime, um, if you're somebody who likes to be interactive, if you're somebody who likes to have a show that gets you involved, that interrogation is a very good show. Next, we're going to use the YSL. It's the All Hours Stick Foundation, and this is in B65 Bronze. And we're just going to, oh, no, 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 no. Why did you do that to me? Okay, so we're going to turn this down just a bit because it was over here trying to play me out. Um, yeah, you know, I also noticed when I do my videos back, I notice that I say um so often and I don't know why because my regular daily life, like if I was giving a, a briefing or a speech or something like that, I don't do it. And yet here, I absolutely do it and it kind of frustrates and irritates me. So I'm hoping that I'm doing it less. But now that I pointed it out, you probably noticed it much more than you did before. I'm going to be using the Kat Von D foundation brush. This is clean, but it is stained and I got this in a boxy charm this month. So those are the shows that I have been watching. I'm waiting for Handmaid's Tale to get back on track and get back on TV. I am also waiting for, I don't know if you watched the, was it Selling New York, Selling LA? I'm really wanting those to come back. It has like Frederick on there. Um, it's on Bravo. I'm waiting for those to come back, but I suspect that those are going to take a bit longer because if you're selling properties, that means that you are having to interact with people. And that show has heavy interaction, so I don't necessarily know how that would have gone. So I'm hoping that, you know, with everything that's happening, that it doesn't end up getting canceled just because the premise of the show relies heavily on being around people and with all the kind of restrictions and just precautions that you have to take. I suspect that that would not only be a difficult show to film, but a difficult show to film and have it still feel authentic to the show when you have to take so many precautions of having, um, you know, for an open house, 10 people instead of sometimes they would have three or 400 people and pools and mermaids and kinds of things like that. So I don't know. I really like those shows, but I, I don't, I don't know if they're going to come back or not. Shark Tank is one of my absolute favorite shows. Um, my husband and I love to watch a good Shark Tank and kind of see the products that are coming out here, the pitches, see like, Oh, what would we have done? I always wonder when you have ideas, how do you take your idea from in your mind to like conception? Like do you find somebody who has access to that? Do you have to start making mold? I'm always so curious about that piece because I'm like, where do people find this money to literally take their idea and then begin making prototypes so that way they can try to have, see if it works and then make more for proof of concept. And I don't know. I'm just, I'm very interested in that show. It's, it's really, really good. I'm really enjoying it a lot. I was enjoying Southern Charm, but if anybody has known about that, that whole A-Rod, yeah, A-Rod situation with Jennifer Lopez, I never, I don't blame anybody because at the end of the day, everybody's grown. And grown people do what they want to. Nobody can make you feel a certain way unless you make them feel that way. Nobody can drive you to do something unless it's something that you want to do. So to me, you know, everybody's grown and made their own decisions. But at the same time, I'm just slightly disappointed. Um, I believe it's in Madison. I'm slightly disappointed in Madison. Um, you know, so that kind of has dampened the show slightly for me. And not just what she did, but the fact that, or what it's implied that she did, but the kind of willingness to put it all out there for the public. And I don't necessarily think that the public needed to know those details considering that he was involved with Jennifer and Jennifer does have children. Um, I thought that that was slightly tacky. So I, I don't necessarily know. I don't know. Madison was looking to get out of that, but that was slightly disappointing for me look at that it's so pretty right i just love how easily it blends out it's so pretty i keep doing this because my lips i hate when they look so weird but that is very pretty so now we are going to move on move on 
I'm going to set my base, and I have been using this alone, but I want to just use it as a setting powder. I've used it once as a setting powder, but usually I use it alone. And this is the new Fenty Beauty powder. It's the Pro Filter Soft Matte uh, Powder Foundation in 345. This is what it looks like. As you can see, it starts to get hard pan on it, and that's what I don't like about it. I've been using the sponge, and even the sponge, I don't know if you can see, the sponge has like a little hard pan on it. Um, residues. I think it's because it picks up the oils from your face and then goes into it and so I don't really love that. Like if you have a sponge I think you should figure out a sponge that's not going to absorb the oils from the face and then put it onto the product because it also then concerns me with hygiene and things like that um, for the future and longevity of the product if it's already kind of you know doing that. So I'm just going to take my big fluffy brush and kind of pick up some product. So that is that about that so some other things that have been happening that are more on the bummer side are that I had like recently actually it, okay so recent when I say recent it had it had been probably two or three months I had been having really really bad back pain um, I always had knee pain because I have a knee injury I have a patella injury in both of my knees or both of my patellas, I should say, in both of my legs. And I have arthritis in both of my legs. So, you know, those have always hurt to a certain extent because I used to work out very heavily, um, things of this nature. So my lifestyle changed a bit in, in that way to accommodate those injuries. Um, I didn't want to have surgery. So, you know, we were doing physical therapy, things like that. So typically I bike about 20 miles a day um, and I do the recumbent bike because sitting, you know, I don't know if you've ever had a bicycle seat um, on you for 20 miles, but I'm not here for it. It hurts. Um, the only time I will sit on that type of bike is when I go to spin class and I'm not about it. So I was using the recumbent bike and I, I do about 20 miles um, a day. I'm in my morning to get my morning started, but I had noticed that my back was hurting so bad. And by so bad, I mean, I have a little hairs for my brush. My back was hurting so bad to the point that when I would get up from the recumbent bike, I couldn't do it on my, my own. Like, I literally had to hold the top of the bike and, like, doggone near feel like I was going to break the bike because I needed assistance with getting up off of it. And my back would just hurt so bad, like you had, like, bent over all day. I thought that I was just sitting wrong on the bike, so I was like, you know, I'm just sitting wrong on the bike. I'm just going to take a break from it. Well, then what happened was one night I was sleeping, and I was sleeping on my side facing this way. So for me, it would be me laying on my right side, and I was facing my husband, and I had wanted to turn over. So, you know, I usually have, we start the night on one side knowing very well that you're ultimately going to end up on the other side, but you can't just start off on that side because it's a whole thing that you have to go through. I really like that as a finishing powder. Isn't that very pretty? Um, and I tried to turn myself over and I couldn't. So I had went to turn over and I, I couldn't turn myself over. Like, like my mind was telling me to turn over and I couldn't do it. And I was like, um, okay, what's, what's happening? Why can't I do it? And I tried again. And at this point, I really, I'm trying to get these little hairs off. I really became kind of scared that I wasn't able to turn myself over. So what happened was, is that I had to kind of roll and rock myself. And then I had to hold on to the side of my mattress to kind of pull me over to turn me like a turtle. I was like a freaking turtle in my bed. And I was just like, I don't think that's normal. And there was so much pain. Like my body just felt heavy. I felt like I had, now I am somebody who, regardless of size that I am, whether I'm smaller, bigger, in between, I'm somebody who works out avidly all the time. Um, but it felt like I had been not working out for three or four years and then going back to working out in that kind of very dull, but oh, just such pain that you have in your body. It felt like that and then it felt like I was heavy like when you get out of a pool and you realize you know the weight of your body again that's what it felt like those two things combined and I was just like okay I don't I don't think this is supposed to feel like this this doesn't feel um, normal 
So I contacted my doctor. Camera stopped a little bit, but that's okay. So I went to my doctor and I was just like, hey, you know, I saw a commercial, which I know I shouldn't be WebMDing myself, essentially through these commercials, but I saw a commercial for fibromyalgia. These are my symptoms. Do we think that this might, might be something that it could be? Because I don't think this is normal. And I haven't had it for an extensively long time, but I have, have had it for about three months. Um, but it progressively has gotten worse to a point that concerned me that I don't think that this is supposed to be happening. And he was like, yeah, you know, it definitely sounds like it, you know, checked me out and everything. I was like, yeah, you know, I think, you know, fibromyalgia is what you have. Um, he explained to me like what it was. And then, you know, we were going to do pain management. They said, let me get some blood work on you just so we can see the amount of inflammation that may or may not be in your body. Um, just to kind of give us a direction. So, you know, from what we're seeing right now. Yes, it appears to be fibromyalgia, but let's look at the blood test and just see if it confirms or denies anything or adds any other issue to it, um, blood sugar wise or anything like that. Because if in fact it was something that was maybe um, related to diabetes, then there's a there's a different route that, that we could go down to kind of alleviate the pain that you're having and kind of get things going. So I said, okay. We're gonna go in with the, this is not new. This is the Fenty Caramel Cutie Bronzer that uses a contour literally all the time so I was like okay yeah I can dig it I'm here for it whatever you need for me let's go ahead let's get started so I go I take my blood test you have to fast so your girl was starving like Marvin but nonetheless I got it done and I then ended up having some issues being able to get back in with my doctor to get my blood results interpreted um, because there's some issues going on at the office. So it ended up being, I got my blood test done late January and it ended up being the beginning of March when I was actually able to get back in to see him. So one was very unhappy with that. Um, because in the interim, I'm now going through extreme pain every day, every day I'm in chronic pain and I've had chronic migraines since I was 11. So migraine pain not that I, I have, I guess I've, adap I've adapted to it. Um, they're extremely painful, but what are you going to do? This is what I, this is what I have to deal with. You have the medication. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but you know, but so I'm used to chronic pain in that way. And then because I have the issues with my knees, I was very much so used to what that felt like, um, and kind of adapting my life to still be able to do things with the pain that I had. Um, in my knees and things like that but this was this was a lot of pain and this was all over pain I mean this was pain to the point where it was hard to get up and get myself clothed or shower to do my hair it was it was very difficult and that is when um, if you notice there was like this huge break in my videos it, it had gotten very painful so the whole time I'm in pain and I'm still going to work every day. And like I said, you know, I do work in a helping field. So it's very important that when I go to work that I'm on because I'm not there to chat about my problems or have patients feel like they need to take care of me. My job is to assist them with what it is that they're going through to identify, you know, skills and techniques that can aid in the resolvement of the issue, whatever that may look like, because resolvement looks different for, for everybody and for everything, and um, ways to combat the issue becoming a problem or that severe in the future. It's not about me, which is fine. But I was finding it hard. I was finding that, um, you know, two or three times I was having to cancel sessions, not because I didn't want to do them, but because I couldn't get out of bed. Like I couldn't, I could not do anything without assistance. I couldn't get myself showered. I couldn't get myself ready. I couldn't even just not be showered because who's going to be able to know because I do telehealth. Um, but to just be halfway presentable. Um, and you know, the number one thing to really be present for them, because if I'm in that much pain, the reality is I can't be present for you. I can't be fully present for what it is you're giving me. If in fact I'm thinking about how much pain it is that I'm in and I just can't wait for the session to end 
because I need to go lay down um, or I need to go take some medicine or I need to walk around the house or I, I just need to cry. So that was, you know, mentally and emotionally affecting me because I take great pride in the work that I do and I take great pride in knowing that there are some people who are seeing me because it's all, it's all they have is a support system and I don't feel good when I have to take time for myself because I need it because then I feel like, well, who's going to be there for them? If I'm gone, there's not another person to kind of step in um, and, you know, do what we were doing. So it was a very difficult time for me um, when that was happening. Fast forward to the beginning of March, I was finally able to get in with my doctor to get my labs read. Now in the interim, my family, a lot of us work in medicine. I'm the only one, funny enough, who works in mental health, but you know, I have many family members who, who work in medicine. I can read my labs. I just can't interpret the information as a whole as to what it, it means for me. So individually I can look at things and say okay this is what this means this is what that means this is what that means but collectively as a whole as it pertains to me as a person and any other symptoms family history things like that I I couldn't interpret it as a, as an entirety so which was bad because from what I did know about what I was reading it wasn't great and so from the end of January to the beginning of March I literally had panic attacks all the time um, because of what I was reading about what it potentially was and kind of prognosis and outcomes and uh, what she may or may not experience and go through and how quickly it will onset and things like that. So it wasn't a great time for your girl to tell you that. So... Like I said, finally getting with my doctor. The next thing we're going to do is the new ColourPop, the, the Cheek Dew Serum Blushes. I have it right here, and this is in Hot Fuss, so I hope that this looks cute. Finally got in with my doctor, and, um, you know, he interpreted my labs similar to how I interpreted them. Um, my labs were perfect. My E1Cs were perfect. My cholesterol was perfect. Everything was perfect. Everything, if he had seen that. On any given Sunday, he said this would have been a perfect lab. And he would have just said, well, we're not quite sure what's going on. Um, you know, we'll give you some pain management medication, see what happens. You know, muscle relaxers, things like that. Come back, you know, a month or so and kind of see what's happening. But what I did have was a positive ANA. So ANA is an autoimmune response in your body and to have a positive ANA means that you have an autoimmune disorder it shows that your body for whatever reason um, is actively attacking something in your body and not only was it positive but I had this thing called there's something called titers um, and there's certain levels of them um, so there's low titers and then there's mid titers and high titers. So I had high titers. So there was almost no chance that this was a false positive ANA. Um, and in fact, with it being so high, you know, that was kind of concerning. So what they found was I did have inflammation in my body um, that I was positive. I did have an autoimmune disorder. It was just now trying to figure out which one when you test positive for an autoimmune disorder, whether your doctor orders additional tests or not, the lab will order additional tests that go with that just to see um, what antibodies you're positive for to try to better determine for the doctor what autoimmune disorder you may have. So I was like negative, 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 positive. And I had a positive RMP. So a positive RMP essentially it's like a rhinoid. I'm not really familiar with it. Um, again, this is all new to me. Um, but what it meant was to have a positive RMP with no other antibodies that were positive meant that not only 
did I in fact likely have this autoimmune disorder that was connected to the RMP, but there was almost little to no chance that it was not this autoimmune disorder because I was only positive for the RMP. I wasn't positive for anything else that could have indicated anything else. So when I went to the doctor, he was like, you know, but for those two things, everything else is perfect. And like, basically that's a bummer. Um, because although he can't diagnose me with an autoimmune disorder, he can just diagnose me with being ANA positive. Um, from the, the information that he had, he was like, you know, yeah, it, it appears that this is going to end up being mixed connective tissue disease. Not fun because that's what I had anticipated and that was not what I wanted to hear. Um, so I did get a referral to a rheumatologist and so I started calling around. <laughs> if you don't know, rheumatology is popping. Um, I called 21 rheumatologists because you, you kind of want to have a good rheumatologist. You know, if you have something, I don't know if you know, but mixed connective tissue disease is not just a connective tissue disorder. It is, it is a specific non-specific disease in which it's also rare. So there's not a lot of information about it. <laughs> there is not a lot of studies. There's not a lot of support groups. As a matter of fact, I've never found one. You usually have to find like a lupus or some other, you know, uh, rheumatoid support group um, because it is one of the more rare um, autoimmune connective tissue disorders. So I wanted to have a good rheumatologist. So I was calling around all 21 didn't have appointments for 12 months. Like that's the first chance they would be able to see me. And that would have meant from the date that I got my labs done, it would have been a year and a half by the time I saw them. And my fear was in a year and a half, a lot can happen. Um, and autoimmune disorders, regardless of which ones you have, the reason why they become such an issue, it's not just the pain that it creates with inflammation and joint pain and damage and things like that. It's the organ pain that, it, that not the organ pain, the organ issues it causes with your heart, um, with your kidneys, with your liver, um, that it starts to damage it because your body is literally attacking itself. And so the longer you go, the longer it has to just kind of wreak havoc without medications, without things like that, without kind of knowing what's going on. So I literally was just bawling. Like I was calling around and my husband just came into the room and I was sobbing on the phone with this intake girl. I, I, th I felt, I felt so bad for her, but like, I just couldn't hold it in anymore. Like I was just crying because it's like, at this point I had read the prognosis. I had read the studies that were available. And of course I know because I'm in a field in which I've been involved with various types of, of research on different levels, but that about, you know, anywhere from five to 15 years is, is typical for research to be conducted. And that it's not that there's not a positive prognosis after 15 years. It's just that they, the research study was done. So it's not like they followed people for 30, 40, 50, oh, this is very pretty, years after that. But for the research that they had done, it wasn't looking good for your girl. <laughs> it was looking like, you know, do what you need to do in these next six to 15 years because you have a best buy date now on you. <laughs> You're like milk, you know, best used by this date. And I had sat with this now for months thinking about it. And then for the potential to not see a specialist for another 12 months. Meanwhile, I would be in this extreme pain. I just, I, I just couldn't wrap my mind around it. And at the same time that I was feeling very upset and scared for myself, I also was, was feeling so horrible for the fact that autoimmune disorders themselves collectively are not rare. Um, many people suffer from them. And I was just like, God, the fact that I can't get in for 12 months, how are these people able to get in? And how are you supposed to do your follow-up appointments? No wonder they progress the way that they do. No wonder people die of heart failure, pulmonary issues, things like this, uh, kidney issues, liver issues, because you're, you're seeing your rheumatologist when once every year, in 12 months, a lot happens. I mean, look at our last year, 2020. In 12 months, a lot happens. Um, 
if we'd better been able to get on top of that, maybe things wouldn't have turned out the way that they did. And it's the same thing. So I was just, I was scared. I was frustrated. I was using every technique I had as a therapist to kind of pull myself out. Um, and I, because I, I honestly was just, was in a bad spot with it. Um, so finally I was able to get some medication um, to at least stop the inflammation or control the inflammation as long as I take the medication. So typically I was at a 10 level pain every single day throughout my entire body. Um, I really couldn't do anything. It had just progressed so fast from the onset point of when I felt like this wasn't normal. It, it was like overnight, I, my life stopped. I finally was put on medication and the pain, it took some edge off of it. So instead of a 10, I was at like a six, but when you've been at a 10 for months, a six feels like a two. Like I could help my husband paint. Even the next day I was paying for it with my body. I could clean my room. I could finally cook dinner again. Like I was able to be present in my life with the people who are in my life. Um, but it was, it was really, it was really tough. Um, and I finally called the last rheumatologist that I had on my list and I was just crying and crying and my husband was like, well, you know, if we have to go out of state, we'll go out of state, you know, we'll do what we have to do. Um, and that rheumatologist was able to see me in the next, you know, 40 days. So although I would not have wanted to wait another month and a half, because now since January, I haven't seen a specialist. So by the time I see my specialist, it will be, you know, about six months, five, six months. Um, but it's still much better than having to wait the 12 months. So to wait basically a month and a half, I was willing to take it. So where I'm at right now is taking the medication for inflammation to try to stay out of pain. And because you don't want your body to be constantly inflamed, especially if it's not from something like working out, like this is my body attacking my body because there are, there's severe adverse effects that come from long-term inflammation. Um, they've connected it to things like dementia, Alzheimer's, that it's that inflammation um, that can cause early onset, downgrade in cognitive ability, deterioration of muscles, the joints, if they stay inflamed too long. Um, you know, like anything, what they don't tell you about things is that when you get sick with anything, although the doctor has determined that the medicine that you're going to be given is worth the risk compared to the disease that you have, the medicine itself, it's like if a disease ain't going to take you out, the medicine might. Like, your organs may be fine now, which my organs, thank God, were fine. There's been no no damage that they can tell to my organs. But the medication, potentially I could end up with damage because of the medication I'm taking to try to keep me out of pain. So it's always that catch-22. So, I mean, that just really, it severely sucks. <laughs> Because it's between, like, it's like you're always between like a rock and a hard place. Um, I feel like with with things in life, so that's what I'm doing. I'm waiting on that. Um, in short, mixed connective tissue disease is not just one autoimmune dis disorder. So instead of just having like lupus, what it is it from what I gather, and again, I haven't seen my rheumatologist, but from what I gather. If in fact it is found that that is what I have and that is what it's looking like it may be leaning towards because of what I was positive for, um, is that it is the onset of at least three different autoimmune disorders. Um, so lupus, uh, scleroderma, um, rheumatoid arthritis, um, all at once. So instead of getting to have just one you get to have several and some people end up with 10 or 11 different autoimmune disorders with connective, uh, mixed connective tissue disease. The issue with that is, is it's difficult to treat because they don't know what symptoms of these other autoimmune disorders you will end up with. You may not end up with the uh, rash or lung issues from lupus, but you may end up with these other symptoms you may so it, you don't know what symptoms are going to be pulled from these different autoimmune disorders that make up your mixed connective tissue disease 
also over time, you have a high probability that you will go from mixed connective tissue disease to maybe in the next five years, fully developing an autoimmune disorder that you used to just have symptoms for. So you may have mixed connective tissue disease for two, three, four, five years, and then go into the doctors one day and they have now diagnosed you fully with lupus. Um, as well as still having the mixed connective tissue because you still have symptoms from other um, autoimmune disorders as well as now fully having lupus. Now during that time, again, there's all these organ issues that start to happen and all this medication and prednisone and things like that, um, potentially methotrexate that you could be put on. So it really is a roller coaster ride and I'm every day I hope and I pray that, you know, it is what it is. I can't change it. I have to accept it. But that it's it's not as bad as I think. Um, it's tough because there's, I've been able to find a few people here on YouTube who have some videos about um, undifferentiated connective tissue disease, um, which is not meeting all the criteria of mixed connective tissue disease, but they're essentially the same um, and but I haven't been able to find people who are really talking about it and then we're just going in with the hot and heavy highlighter not new um, but they're not a lot of the ones that we're finding would have like the first video talking about how they got diagnosed what some of their symptoms were um, and then they just don't repost again and these are like videos from anywhere from three to five years ago and not to sound you know out there but I was one looking for other people's experiences but two honestly looking for people who had been diagnosed within like the last you know 10-15 years and they had made it that they had had 20-30 years and and still had this disease and they were still thriving and by thriving I mean being here living your life to the best of your ability you know will always have chronic pain that's not gonna go away um, but that they were functioning that they were able to live their life but that they were here and looking at the studies and again the prognosis and then not being able to find even blogs online or people talking about it on like a reddit forum or a youtube forum it just the i don't i don't think i don't think you can understand the weight that that puts on you unless you're there and it's like it's difficult to even talk to family about it because you don't want Family is very supportive in that, you know, you should see the bright side of the street, but when you're the one who is living with a potential best buy date being stamped on you, it is very difficult. And it's also very difficult because you don't want to talk to them about it because as, as afraid as you are, you're also realizing that you're potentially making them be afraid because there is a likelihood that sooner than they thought they will have to complete this journey called life on their own and so that's tough and then it brings about all these thoughts of you know well we always should live like that like you could go outside right now and something devastating could happen to you while you're driving we we don't know the day and the time right we all know that but still in our minds, we live every day like we have time. Like, like 70 is a given. Like, unless something just catastrophic happens, at least 70 is going to be a given. And so if you're only, I'm only 37. If you're only 37, I should have, you know, almost 40 years left at minimum, right? And I want to be at least 97. So I should have had in my mind... 40 plus years left all that was never guaranteed to me in your mind that that's that's very much so how we live and we think is that unless something catastrophic happens 70 is a given and then when you find out you might have a best buy date stamped on you and that maybe 50 maybe 53 
maybe only 43. It's a lot. It's a lot. Because you don't, for me, you don't think of all the vacations you wanted to go on and this, that, and the other. You think of all the things you wanted to do. Like the two years it took me to commit to my PhD program could have been done in a year. I would have only had one more year left. And then it's like, well, should I even complete it? Because will I even be here to kind of do what I want to do with it? Like, you start to very much so get in the, what's the point? If I have a, a best by date on me, what's the point of these things? If I, I'm not going to be able to engage in them. And that I think becomes a very bad cycle because it's like, well, there's still a point. Even if, even if your best by date was only 15 years. That's still 15 years to live the best life you can, make the most memories you can, do all the things that you wanted to do, get the degree, become a teacher, do the research, help the community, um, still be engaged versus just lying and letting the 15 years pass you by. So it really gave me a completely different perspective. And again, my hope is, is that I'll go to the doctor, my rheumatologist, and that it will not be anything like I'm imagining. And that I won't have that best by date or that my doctor will say, hey, we've actually, they're doing research and it's not widely publicized, but this is what it is. And the, the prognosis and these things have changed. And as long as we stay on top of this, that the prognosis is good and you know we we saw this early and it's not like you're five or six years into it and, and really hoping that it's not what I think it it's gonna be that that kind of really negative thing that I think it's gonna be but it has changed my mind frame in that you know the, the Tim McGraw song the live like you were dying it absolutely is true catastrophe happens to us all the time individually collectively um, as a country and for a week two weeks six months we're in it to win it we're all together you know everybody's appreciating everybody and then we adapt and we go right back to where we were before and it's just like you can't do that you can't do that because nothing literally nothing is promised in this entire world except for death and you never know what's going to happen because we don't know the day or the time. So I can't keep that perspective in my mind that time is a given because it's not. Regardless if it's because I have the best by date stamped on me, we all have one. We just don't know what it may be. And the terrifying part is, is potentially knowing the time frame in which that best by stamp and date will be. But the fact is we all have one. We're just unaware. And the sad part is, is that we take on each day as if we don't have one. As if it's just a non-perishable. Like we're non-perishable items. And that's not the truth. So it really has changed my perspective on a lot of things. And I have good days and I have bad days. I have days where I'm really angry. <laughs> and I have days where I'm really sad. And then I have days where I'm like, Get it together. Like, you have to do what you need to do with whatever time you have. It could be another 60 years. Don't cut yourself off at the knees because of what's going on. You need to still live life. You still need to show up every day and actively participate. Um, and so what it's done for me is on mornings when I wake up and I'm not in a level 10 pain and I'm only in a level 8 pain, I get up and I'm doing everything that I wouldn't have done before. I'm, I mean, of course, with the way that things are right now, it's not like I'm out and about, but I'm gardening. I'm helping my husband paint his office. I'm, you know, putting furniture together. I'm doing everything that I can do because one from day to day, I don't know how I'm going to feel. So I don't know if I will have the opportunity to feel well enough to do it again. And because I don't know the time that I have anymore, I very much so now I'm living every day like it's the last. So instead of putting things off like, oh, I'll call my mom later, I'll call my sister later, call them tomorrow, I'll do this tomorrow, why not today? Because what if that, what if tomorrow didn't come? We live like we're non-perishable items and like it's going to come. But what if it didn't? If you knew that it wasn't going to come, would you put those things off? 
the answer is no, then just do them. Then just do them. My camera really hates me in my storytelling. Um, it really has just changed me for the better. And it really has made me appreciate people, things, time, life, even the things that annoy me. Now, I'm like, I'm not giving my time to that argument. Or I'm not giving my time to being upset about this, that, or the other. Or if I'm still feeling like things from the past are upsetting me, I need to resolve those things. I don't need to necessarily resolve them with those people, but I need to resolve them within myself because I don't have the time. Time is too precious. It's the one thing you can never get back and it's the one thing you can't make more of and it's the one thing that you don't know how much you have. So I don't have the time to give time to things that I deem as not important because I only have so many breaths and I don't want to give those breaths to things that are non-consequential in my life, that are not serving me and my purpose in my life, that are not fulfilling me and filling me up in my life because time is too precious. It has really helped me practice self-care and say, hey, I can't take any more on instead of trying to be a perfectionist and please and do and kind of go with societal norms. Because the fact of the matter is everybody thinks they have, well, when I get to retirement age where retirement will slow down, what if you never make it? Take the trip now. If you have the money, take the vacation time, take the trip now. Enjoy your life now. Don't give your time and be so consumed by things like jobs. Yes, you need to work. Yes, you have to have finances. That's just the way it is. But don't give so much that you have nothing to give the other people around you or to yourself. Because you can never get it back. You just can't. Don't give your time to people who are just acquaintances that just fill up your space because you don't have anything else to do because you can't get it back. So every day I'm like, could my time be better spent elsewhere? Do I want to give breath to this? Because I can't get it back. Once it's gone, it's gone. And that was giving there. And could I have given it to something that was more fulfilling that better suited me? So it really has changed my overall perspective. Um, kind of on everything in my life so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and we're going to get this eyeshadow because I just yacked your guys' ears off and actually I think I'm going to do my lips because I'm kind of kind of can't keep looking at my lips this way to be quite honest with you um I had does anybody else hate when they have things out they put them places and then they are nowhere to be found. Okay, here we go. So what I'm going to be using right now is I'm going to use the Dominique Cosmetics. And this is the lip liner in the color Crush. This is very pretty. That's what it looks like. And I got this in the BoxyCharm. And I actually really, really like this. So I'm just going to line my lips. I really like the angle and point of the lip liner. So I'm just going to line my lips like this. And then usually I don't fill in my entire lip, but I actually do like doing it with this. I like to go ahead and just fill it all in. I really like this blush. I've never used this blush. I really like it. Um, they sent it to me, ColourPop sent it to me in PR. And I think I got like four or five different colors. But I really like that color. And it was so easy to put on, even though as you guys saw, I put it right on over powder. And it was fine. It didn't pill up or get weird or kind of anything like that. So I really like it. And I actually would recommend if you're a person who maybe doesn't like the look of powder blush, but also doesn't really want to mess around with the liquid, it's kind of somewhere nicely in between um, the two. So this is the lip liner in the color Crush. Like I said, I really like it. I think it's it's kind of like a my lips but better type of look, you know. And then what I put over it was also something else I got from Boxy Charm this month, and this was a liquid lip balm, and this is by Rowan, and this is in the color Charlie. And I I think this is is Kim Zolciak um, from the Real Housewives or used to be a Real Housewives of Atlanta, and now has the like Don't Be Tried for the Party. I think that this is hers. This is a beautiful component. I really like it. And it's not a liquid lip, it's a liquid 
balm. Lip, lip balm, is that what they call it? Uh, it's basically a lip gloss. I don't know why they call it a liquid lip gloss because it's just a lip gloss. And it pairs so nicely with, uh, with this lip liner. So, have this just like that. And I really like the applicator because um, it's like pointed. Makes it a little easier to get right here. I always hate when I was younger, uh, my, I was jumping on the couch and my teeth went through um, the top of my lid. So I have like a little brown dot right there. And I really hate that. And it's hard to cover. So we have that. So now let's get into this eyeshadow game, shall we? I want to just do something simple today. So what we're going to do is the ColourPop Hocus Pocus palette. I got this on the second time that they had it um, in stock. And I, I used it once very quickly. But didn't really get to get a kind of really good feel for it. So today I just want to, like I said, I just want to do an easy peasy look. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into the color on toast. And this is just this toasted brown right there. And I really wanted this when it first came out. And I was so mad I couldn't get it. This is me and my sister's favorite Halloween movie. Um, but I'm glad that I have it now. So guys, that really is what has been going on with me. Um, like I said, I do have my rheumatologist appointment coming up. And I am not excited, but at the same time, I just want to know. I just want to know definitively what is or isn't. And I want to be able to kind of get on top of things. My hope is that we don't necessarily need any other medication minus what I'm taking currently. And that we're just going to kind of watch things and maybe I'll see my rheumatologist every three months just to kind of get new blood work because you have to get cons constant blood work done because you always need to know how things are changing and how quickly they've changed from the last time so it's hard to go like a whole year or nine months without blood work because they have no idea when in between their things changed um, or how long they've been going on for necessarily how much damage it could have caused so that is my hope that I can just stay where I'm at and that we don't need to necessarily move on to anything else. I really like that color. Um, but we will, we will see. We will see. Other than that, I'm just really trying to keep spirits up. You know, not play the whiny game. Because I've done that. And to be honest with you, at the end of the day, my answer was, why not me? What, what makes me so special that it wouldn't be me? And if not me, then that means it would be somebody else. And I wouldn't want that for somebody. So it's, you know, you have to accept it. You got to just take the bull by the horns, accept it. Do what you need to do. Just stay in your best positive mindset, best positive self. Hold space for your feelings. Feel your feelings, but don't unpack your bags and live there. Because that's detrimental. Um, I think the next color we're going to go in with, you know, I don't even think I'm going to do an outer V color today. Not really in it. I think I'm just going to take On Toast again with, uh, actually, yeah, I'm going to take On Toast again with this and just pull it into my V because I don't want anything too dramatical today, to be quite honest with you. Just want to get in here, do this. This is going to be such a long video, guys. I'm so sorry, but I really hope that you guys, um get something from the video one way or another, whether it's makeup, whether it's just feeling like you have someone to talk to, if you're feeling alone, if you're going through some of the same things, I would, I would love to hear it in the comment section down below. Um, I would love to talk with you guys about it. Um, I would, although, you know, it's a, it's kind of a sad, sad topic. Um, I'm going to go in next with Come Little Children, which is kind of like a taupey color. Um, but if you guys would like me to do maybe like a monthly video um, on kind of how things are going, um, information I'm getting, 
I would be more than happy to do that. I mean, to be quite honest with you, do I want my business all on the streets? No, not really. <laughs> but because when I look, there's such a lack of information and there's so much fear. There's just so much fear because there's so much unknown, especially because there's such a lack of information, in particular with undifferentiated connective tissue disease and mixed connective tissue disease. Um, that I would not mind putting my business out there um, as far as what I'm experiencing or um, what my final diagnosis ends up being or what medications they put me on or how it's working. Um, just that way if somebody else ever needs these videos that they can feel like they're not alone <laughs> and that after like two years someone didn't just stop posting and you're like, huh. I wonder if they became that statistic for the prognosis, or I wonder if they're still living a thriving life um, and can kind of give me hope that it's going to be okay. Painful, because you're always going to have chronic pain, but nonetheless, it's going to be okay. Um, I would definitely be more than willing to do that if you guys found that you think that it this I'm just going back in with on toast um, if you guys felt like that would be something that could be helpful or beneficial to you or for you I would not mind doing um, monthly updates on how I'm feeling and kind of what things are going on if everything if anything seems like it's progressed or um, maybe ways to combat the pain or to kind of stay in the best mind frame and mindset. Um, I could do that, so just kind of let me know down below um, if you guys want to do that. I'm just going in with Hello Salem. Hello Salem is kind of like another kind of peachy taupe right here. I'm going to use this as a brow bone. I mean, I don't have my brows on yet, but I will put them on. Um, so, yeah, but I just wanted to kind of chat about some updates, chat about some things that have been going on, touch base with you guys, try out some new makeup. Um, yeah, just stay in touch with you guys. You know what I mean? It's hard sometimes. There's it's been a lot that's been going on. Um, so I think that it makes it difficult to kind of stay together sometimes. I'm going to go in with Yabos, and it's this green right here. I'm just going to do that as an inner corner highlight. Which I know seems green, seems weird to go in with a green, but that's what I'm gonna do. Just gonna go in with this green right here, like this. Very pretty. So, guys, if you enjoyed this video, please let me know in the comment box down below. Um, if you guys have anything you want to share with me, like what's been happening with you, what are you, and it's not going to be negative or sad or positive. Did you get a new job? Um, did you start school? Did your kids go back to school? Did your kids get into school? Any, absolutely anything. Did you get a new puppy? Um, did you get new bedroom furniture, a new bed set, you know, because it's changing over to you being the summertime. So I know sometimes people get new like bedding sets, like, um, comforters and things like it doesn't have to be doom and gloom, you know, I just want to hear what, what's hot and happening with you guys. Um, what's going on? The next thing that I'm going to do before we kind of wrap things up a bit is I am going to I had them here, and of course now I cannot find them. So let me kind of see where they were. I have some mascara that I want to use. I'm going to... I do not know where it went. So, oh, here we go. I'm going to put some liner on, and we're going to just use this green liner. Yeah, let me just get one second. I got a little thing right here. Let me... Do this. All right. 
So let's go ahead and let's take this. This is in the color Fast Lane, and we're just going. This is from ColourPop. And we're just going to put this just to add a little something because I don't really want black or brown. I just want to, but I do want to kind of put a color. I do actually really like that. Very, very, very pretty. Very nice, okay. So I do like that, I think that's very nice. And then I'm just gonna go in with the chart. It's the double ended, um, where it has a liquid on one side and it has the black kind of gel liner on the other side. I'm just gonna use the black liquid liner just to kind of ground that put this on so yeah guys talk with me down in the comment section I know this has been such a long video and I greatly greatly appreciate you guys sticking with me um, especially if you watch the entire video if you watch the entire video then I appreciate you because I know you're probably looking like, oh girl, I guarantee you this video is probably going to be probably over an hour. And it's like, oof, girl, I don't know if I got time like that. But I appreciate anybody who does stay here and watches the whole thing. Um, because you guys give so much to me. You guys give way more than me than you know you give to me. And especially right now, trust me, I can use it. We're going to take it old school and we're doing the CoverGirl Lash Volume Blast. You know, it's only drugstore ones that I do this. All my other mascaras, I never do that. I don't know why. And we're going to just go into this. This is very nice. I haven't used CoverGirl mascara in so long. But I am definitely, definitely here for it. The wands are definitely, I can feel them, they're definitely stiffer than kind of like a high-end mascara. So that is one thing to note that I actually had never noticed, um, I think because I stopped buying drugstore mascara a while ago, which I don't know why, because that high-end mascara, they're trying to charge you $30, $40 for mascara, and you can get one for six. And I actually am really liking how this is separating things. It's very pretty. Let me go ahead and try to do my lower lash line with this big old wand. I already feel myself getting it on my on my freaking skin. So if I did, we'll just have to wait for some of it to dry. And then I'll be able to take off. Let's see. Okay. Right, so I did get a little bit, so I'm gonna have to wait for that to dry for a second and then go in and do it. And I actually think I wanna go in with another just kind of coat here on the top for my mascara. Also guys, you can always leave, um, is there any videos that you're interested in? I get BoxyCharm, but it seems like nobody really wants to watch those videos because there's just so many of them out there these days. Do you want more get readies with me where I just use a ton of products? Do you want me to do kind of like five or six products in a video and do reviews on them? What What is it that you guys want to see? I, I'm trying to make videos that I like to watch, um, but that doesn't mean that there are always going to be videos that you guys necessarily want to see. So I would love to get your input and feedback um, on videos you would like to see or products that you would like me to try out because I'm actually in this thing where now it's like if I'm not just off the bat interested. I'm, I don't want to say I'm on a low buy, but I'm definitely not actively looking to kind of purchase things um, just for no reason. You know, I'm thinking about kind of adding a specific kind of foundation review day to my ch channel where it's like maybe every other week I am reviewing foundations because I have about 60 of them. But it doesn't mean that they're all kind of quote unquote new, hot and happening. You know, they're just, I have a ton of foundations. So I don't really know if you guys would necessarily be interested in that either. 
I typically don't do my brows on camera, but I guess we can go ahead and we can give it a go and kind of see, um, you know, what we're going to come up with here. So, but yeah, give me some information about what you guys might want to see and check out. Let me know what shows you've been watching because I love a good show. And, you know, since we have been home for about 12 months now, um, I have really, really just kind of been running out of shows, although a lot of shows are starting to film now. I, I'm impatient on waiting on them because I've gotten so used to just watching full shows, especially with Netflix, where they were just filming full shows together and so you could watch all the episodes at one time. Um, so I don't really have necessarily the patience waiting on episode after episode. So are there any shows that you guys have been watching um, that you would recommend? I see shows like Ozarks, um, Euphoria, I don't really know what those shows are about. If any of you guys have watched any of those, what are they worth the watch? I know people really love Zendaya, which is fine, but is the show itself worth the watch? Not just her performance or because, you know, people enjoy her as a as a person, but like what is the premise of the show? Is it something worth kind of getting into? I would assume yes, because a lot of people like it, but at the same time, just because a lot of people like something doesn't necessarily mean um, that it's good. It just means that for whatever reason, a lot of people are currently um, watching. Oh, speaking of which, the evolution of hip hop. You guys need to watch that. That is so good. They have its, I think the evolution of hip hop is on Netflix and they have another one. Oh God, what, should, what is that called? I don't think it's called The Evolution of Hip Hop on Hulu, but it's um, the one on Hulu has like Bimmy, it has Waka Flocka's mom. It is so good. Um, it, it's a really good, good show. And then they have the, I believe it's called The Evolution of Hip Hop on Netflix. And that is also really good so I would watch those two um even if you're not somebody who's necessarily into hip-hop per se it it talks a lot about the industry and just kind of like things that were happening at that time why certain people did certain songs why certain people did this that and the other how the music industry is so tightly tied to um quote-unquote street culture you know um things like that, like why that happened and um, how hip hop got started as far as its ties to, you know, that culture and crime and things like that. And I, it was just such an interesting show. Um, I'm, I'm so glad that we decided to watch it because it just, it was such an interesting perspective on things that I thought maybe I knew, but really it's like, you just have no idea. Um, oh, speaking of that, The Real World Back to New York, if you have Amazon or Paramount Plus, definitely watch that. It is so interesting to see them, the New York cast, come back together for a couple of episodes and see how much people have changed, not just physically, but mentally and emotionally, and then also to see how much people haven't changed and kind of that whole thing. So I think that's also interesting. So guys, let's go ahead and do our last thing, which is our spray. Um, none of my brow products were new. This is the Tarte Maracuja Mist. Let's get this going. This is a very nice spray. Look at that. So we're just going to... This is a Maracuja Mist setting spray. We're going to use our little fan right here, so please do not be alarmed by the noise. Alright, yeah, I'm glad I got to try out some new products or newer to me products. I'm glad that you guys are here with me watching me draw my face off with this silly little fan. And guys, I just love you so much for being here for me. Like I said, when you see how long this is, please do not detour yourself. Um, I will try to leave timestamps below because I understand that it's a long video, and I, I, but I don't really know what I will leave timestamps for. Um, so if you watch it share 
like, tell others about it, so that way they can come watch it to you. And if you haven't already, subscribe to me. Hit that notification bell so you'll be notified of all my new videos. And guys, until next time, follow me. Oh, follow me over on Instagram so you can see what I do when I'm not here with you guys. But until next time, guys, I love you. I thank you so much for spending time with me. I'll miss you until then. And I will see you on the flip side. I love you guys. Look at this look. Get into it. How are you guys feeling about it? Bye.